let's uh, come back home, where not many Nigerians were shocked last week when the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Ni Adebayo, told the House of Representatives that other countries in Africa, and of course including Ghana, are asking industries in this country to relocate their jurisdictions. The minister says Nigerian companies have been incentivized to leave the country as Africa's biggest economy grapples with virus industrialization initiatives. Joining me to discuss the agenda for Nigeria's rapid industrialization as the country steps forward early next year to choose a new leader is Tokwe Fashua. Tokwe Fashua is an economist and founder and CEO at Global Analytics Consulting. Uh, Fashua was also a presidential candidate in the 2019 general elections under the umbrella of the Abundant Nigeria Renewal Party. A good evening to you. Great to have you in our Abuja studios this evening. Thank you very much, Bosin. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Good evening. It's great to have you here. We're going to discuss a little bit around industrialization. So I'm going to ask you this question straight out of my box. What are the key missing links in Nigeria's industrialization efforts? And why does it look like we just can't industrialize? Or perhaps at the pace at which we're growing our population and everything else that is uh, staring us right in the face? Uh, good question. There are so many things that are missing in our quest, you know, and uh, part of it is historical as well. You probably, I think at the point we, we were even talking about deindustrialization of Nigeria. Uh, remember what has happened to all those places in Lukpeju, the industrial estate, Ocho, the industrial estate, Isolo industrial estate and all that, Sharada in Kano, uh, in Kaduna, Kakuri, all of that. What happened to them? You know, we, we, had, we once had, uh, you know, the beginnings of in industrialization. As much as, uh, you know, there wasn't much ownership, local ownership of that, maybe driven by foreigners uh, who have now upped and left the country. Uh, however, no country can survive without in in industrialization willy-nilly. So, of course, we still have the uh, uh, producers of Indomie and Ota and all of those, uh, the breweries and all that. You know, uh, but those ones are just basically minimal kind of industrialization that we have now. All right, so with Nigeria is actually is talking about deindustrialization, what happened, what went wrong. Uh, however, if you, if you want to actually understand that question, why are we where we are and what should we be doing, you have to find out the meaning of industrialization. Uh, the way it could be defined is when a country uh, begins to move away from the production of uh, basic goods, you know, uh, and then begins to talk about more complex goods. So industrialization is about how well a country attains what is called economic complexity, where you start to move away from producing of food, you know, basic primary products, and you begin to product, produce more complex stuff from primary to secondary to tertiary. Now we're even talking about quaternary and quinary uh, level products uh, that move the world, you know, and, and, and that, those are things that run the world. For example, uh, what you have in technology these days, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, defining the future. So I think what has happened is that Nigeria has not quite got off, um, you know, producing those local things in terms of our local capabilities, uh, not in terms of the things we can in, import the machines from elsewhere and produce it and we have to go back and bring in the machines when they spoil or we have to go back for the expertise to even repair them. So uh, I think we haven't actually got started at all. That's why the first experiment pre-independence failed uh, by the time we were moving into the structural adjustment program in 1986. Since that point, we started to go on a downhill uh, journey. So where are we today? Do you think that the current administration uh, has taken enough steps to industrialize Nigeria over the last seven years? Um, well, of course, it's obvious. Um, if we were industrializing, we would not have the kind of economic indices that we have. And again, um, I must also tell you, um, you know, the part of the history is also that the, the concept of industrialization changed somewhere along the line. And of course, nobody is going to tell you that things are going to change. So what was industrialization before is no longer industrialization today. A lot of things have been taken for granted. China came on board, okay, the, it became the world's factory. So when people envision industrialization in Nigeria today, we're hoping we could go back to the point where we could be a factory, maybe for, for the region in West Africa, okay? Other countries in Africa have repositioned, even Morocco. 
um, you know, Morocco, Egypt, some of these guys, Algeria, South Africa, Kenya. These guys are repositioning, even Ghana. You know, so um, so at best, uh, we should probably think about how we can produce for ourselves. You know, so but that era where um, you know we'll just be uh, producing, I mean, uh, creating companies that can industries and manufacturing centers and factories. Um, it perhaps is, is, is gone now. If we want to reenact it, we have to have a vision about how long this is going to last, given the fact that everybody competes with everybody now. You have to, whatever it is you're producing here, in terms of price, efficiency, uh, utility, and what have you, must be able to compete with what's coming from anywhere in the world. And so you also must get smart. How have they done it in other countries whereby the very successful countries, somehow, you know, you don't, you don't close your system, but you have to try and exclude and, and incentivize local production against international uh, importation and all of that. Uh, otherwise, they would not survive, you know. So we're only imagining. So this government hasn't quite done uh, as well. The results are there. Unemployment is shooting up. Um, we seem not to know what to do with our population. Uh, inflation between 2015 and to date is about 300% on most items, including food and, and so on. So they, we haven't done well. And of course, unemployment has got to 33%. Uh, you know, and of course, the industries are complaining. And in fact, we're even having more instances where companies are leaving the country because of security issues, mm -hmm. because of power issues, because of infrastructure issues in general. Okay. Uh, and, and of course, things are just quite toxic right now. So I think well, we, we need to be actually thinking outside the box and really been storming on how we're going to solve this serious quagmire. I've got some very tough questions for you after the break. Stand by for one this conversation, everyone. Stand by. Talk with Asha in Abuja Studios. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back, everyone. Tokwe Fashua, economist, politician, founder, and chief executive officer at Global Analytics Consulting, is watching keenly the various candidates declaring for the office of the president in the 2023 general elections. Tokwe Fashua is yet to make a formal declaration, so I'm asking him for his suggestions on how Nigeria should proceed with industrialization under a new administration. That will be by June next year. So, uh, let, before I ask you what you think the new administration should do uh, and your, what do you think the criteria should be for Nigeria's uh, next uh, CEO, the corporate Nigeria CEO, I'm going to ask you. The current uh, Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, uh, Niyi Adebayo, says uh, companies from Ghana, countries from Ghana and others are uh, asking Nigerian companies to step over, pack up from Nigeria and step over to their countries to, uh, because they have a better environment for their industry. How, how, what do you make of that statement? He told the House of Representatives that much last week. Well, I believe it as much as it's shocking uh, for everyone, but it's a wake up call for everybody as well. And I'm asking, why not if not? Because um, you know, it's a dog eat dog world. And you know, every country, every minister, every, everybody who's in the government should be patriotic for their country. If, if we are not getting our act right here, you know, they, 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 they wouldn't mind beating us down into the dust. And that's what's happening. So um, what, what are the bases on which they will say that? You know, we haven't managed to fix, it, fix security. I mean, just two weeks ago or less than that, we had, we had with the mishap with the train, a bombing with the train. And eight people dead, 167 people in car. Look, all of these things are beaming to the global media on a per second basis. It's so, 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 so unfortunate. But, but there are industries. That, you know, Nigeria uh, is still uh, in this uh, level. Uh, so, for, for so sure. the, the point in, is, in the some point countries is, where so you have yes, insecurity, you. you have industries. So, Nigeria is not the only country where there is insecurity, and you have industries. Most countries. Most countries where they have insecurity are de-industrializing because where you get, number one, the, the foreign capital is not going to come. The domestic capital doesn't even stay. Mm. I, mean, I mean, I was looking at the, uh, the Global Terrorism Index today. Nigeria is at number six. We used to be somewhere in number 14 before. So, I mean, we're competing with countries like Afghanistan, um, uh, Mali, um, you know, even Iraq is probably doing a little bit better now. So, uh, we don't want to be in this category. We have no, 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 no reason to be in that category. So, security is one aspect. So, we will, will infrastructure so, is another. Yeah, but you know, will industrialization, another. Will so, industrialization yeah, help so us why, resolve why, why some of the issues of insecurity? Because insecurity in Nigeria is just a function Chicken of what? Chicken and egg, Chicken and egg both it. Yes. 
Absolutely. What should chicken we have? Chicken and egg thing. Which one comes first? Do you do you how do you do you industrialize first? And therefore, the insecurity will go, or do you fix insecurity before? In, but I must tell you, I sway on the side of fixing insecurity, and then uh, um, and then industrialization will come, so that people have the confidence to even establish companies and know that they'll be alive to run those companies and see their profits and their dividend at the end of the year. So the, the Ghanaians are being, they're doing what they need to do. If perhaps if we were in, in their shoes, you know, it'd be vice versa as well. So they talk about issues of, of of infrastructure, issues of insecurity. That's very 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 critical. People, people they say a lot of things about this world, but nobody wants to die, you know, and, and so that's, that's the critical thing that I think we should fix, and without that, we can't get off ground zero, and that's the fact. So, uh, well, I don't blame them, but it also tells us that we need to get, we need to get really, really sick. Look, Nigeria's situation is at a point where a leader should not sleep should not eat until these problems are solved. If our, uh, if our leaders are still sleeping and eating and jollying and backslapping, that means they're not doing the job. You know, because whatever it takes must be put to it to ensure that we get out of these problems. So how do we, uh, what, would you, what would you suggest for the new administration in 2023 regarding industrialization drive? You think the next president and his team should not eat, sleep, or drink? In a man, exactly. in a man, in a man, that's in a the first thing. Don't yes. eat, don't sleep, don't sleep, don't listen. You know, Nigeria is right there, right at the precipice, like never before, like never before. I mean, in the last few years, we've even become even more divided amongst ourselves. You know, among re in religions, in, in in ethnicities, nationalities, what have you. You know, so don't eat, sleep, or drink. Number one. You know, I mean, in those biblical times when the God will send the prophet to the king and say, "You have to go out in in, in sackcloth and pour ash on your body." That's the point where we are in Nigeria. But again, they also need to keep an open mind, okay? Keep an open mind. Bring on new ideas, you know, be, 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 and, and be, be sure that you're not indoctrinated, you know? And also be, be, be real with this country. We need nationalistic leaders. This country needs to protect itself. The United States, the United Kingdom, all those countries, when they were going to, when they were on the up, upward trajectory, they found ways of protecting their economy and working for their people not for external parties. Uh, you know, and again, I, one critical missing link is that we're not seeing the products of our, of our higher institutions transiting into the streets, okay? They, they, I don't know, we have to have a program where, because the people of this country are the ones that will develop this country. So the, the, the industrialization will only be sustainable in Nigeria the day that we own that industrialization. So we need two types of industrialization. The first one is we need to bring back the factories, however we can. But the technology, uh, but again, we also need to get on technology because we're talking about the fourth, fifth, sixth industrial revolution as we speak. Okay? Well, we haven't so done the first industrial revolution. Technology we haven't done the first. We haven't done the first industrial revolution. You are right. So you are, we're, you are right. So we because the basic food, the, the so basic we food, we can't even prepare Bosi. it. Bosi. Yes. Bosi. You are right, Bosi. You are right, Bosi. We're not even at the level where they were in 1750 Europe. Okay, where they could we could put together meals, they could put together machines that were you know you know run with steam, and they could produce things that their people need. This country is so externalizing everything in every way. Today. That's why I say sometimes we need to be contrite. You know, we we however you know we are, we have been caught up with by you know globalization. We want every nicest thing that's produced anywhere in the world today. We even use our government money to buy those things. That's what I'm saying. We need to be contrite. We need to go back to that point where the biblical time where leaders actually wore sackcloth and put ashes on their body. Literally speaking, however it pans out, we it need that contrition in government. We need the government that will come in and decide to be very, very frugal with its expenditure in government and ensure that every every cobble that's spent actually dovetails into the lives of the people of this country and is also productive. So we need to well, drive productivity well, amongst our people. We're, we're currently, the country is currently searching for a new a CEO in 2023. Give me your criteria for him or her could be a female president. Well, the economic and business quick take should be effective June next year. You haven't declared whether you're interested, so I'm gonna, gonna ask you a few personal questions, but what should be the criteria for the next president? Well, he or she, he or she, he or she must, he or she, listen, he or she must be a nationalist through and through. So, you know, you'd be ready to die for Nigeria. I say it often, and I ran before, running for the presidency of this country is a death wish. If you're, if you're there to protect your life and to enjoy, you've missed it. And they're going to so mess you up 
and I'm not going to mention names, you know. But so, first of all, be nationalistic. Be ready that everybody in Nigeria is your brother, is your charge, okay? Is your brother, is your sister, is your charge. You don't, you, you have to be blind to ethnicity, blind to religion, but you are here to do the job. In fact, take religion out of the, out of our White House, out of our House of Rock, you know, and let's face this issue. So you have to be open-minded. You have to also invest in the youth. You have to go back and tell the youth and let them understand the power of, you know, of productivity, the, 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 the dignity of labor. A lot of our youths are, are lost now. People are looking for fast money. You have to find a way. So you have to be, you have to be, you have to be an, an orator. You have to be able to speak. You have to be a communicator. 95% of the work of leadership today is communication, okay? And whether by spoken, by written, and by body language. We want a leader that will speak to the people of this country and, and paint a vision about where we're going. And you cannot relate because there's the power, the power in repetition. So you have to keep repeating, this is where we're going. Remember, this is where we're going. And then you repeat again, this is where we're going. You know, we don't, we, we, we are in one of, most of this trouble today because we're, we're stuck with a taciturn leader who doesn't speak, so we don't know what, everybody goes in their own direction. How do you pull together? So the Nigerian, Nigerians collect money and they spend everything abroad. Or they spend on things that don't matter. People collect money and invest abroad, they don't invest at home. So, you, and then, of course, the leader must be very, very, uh, you, you listen, be ready to step on any toes and be very firm. We, must, we, we should be able to deal with this problem of insecurity, willy-nilly. We should. And it is the people of this country that will secure this country. Forget buying uh, surveillance cameras and all of that. The, the moment you lost it, and I think this was told to us, which was said to us by the serving uh, British High Commissioner uh, a couple of years back. That if you don't invest in the people, the people will not secure your country. Until you invest in your people, your people will secure your country. The man on the street must be able to know that, listen, this is Nigeria, this is my country, and there's absolutely, absolutely nothing wrong with this country. This country, yes, call it a geographical expression, just like the USA is a geographical expression. There's nothing wrong with this. I think it's preposterous for us to assume that, uh, you know, it's just a geographical yeah. So people say, I'm first of all a Yoruba before I'm a, I'm a Nigerian. I don't know what that means. There's nothing wrong in being a Nigerian, Slimpisita. And, of course, you are recognized only as a Nigerian when you step out of this country. We're deliberately, you know, screwing up this country ourselves. And I think we're being very unfair to ourselves and to generations okay. unborn. So we want a firm leader. We want My a focused leader. We want a visionary leader. Mm. We want a talkative leader who will keep repeating what the issues are and dragging the people along with him. Thank okay. you. Okay, so, so I'm going to ask you, are you declaring? No, I'm not. Okay. Not this time. Quite, quite an engaging. We're going to watch and see how it goes, but not. You got your ringside ticket. <laughs> engaging and insightful conversation with Thank you. you. Well, well, I have... Thank you so much. Politician, economist, Thank you, writer, and CEO at Global Analytics Consulting.